I really don't want to be making this video. Look, is Tannehill perfect? No. Kind of like my complexion. I think I got a zit right there. You see that? All right, look, we all know about the seven stages of grief, right? There's shock and disbelief, denial, guilt, and there's anger and bargaining, depression, reconstruction, and of course, acceptance. Well, apparently there's an eighth stage of grief and Titans fans flung right to it. And that's bashing the absolute hell out of Ryan Tannehill. Now, I want to weigh in on this real quick. Some of you are not going to like my take. And in turn, you probably won't like me. In fact, some of you will probably hate me. Because if you hate Tannehill after one lousy playoff start, you're certainly going to hate me after this lousy video. Now look, I'm no Ryan Tannehill stan or anything. I'm not one of those like Marcus Mariota truthers that you still see amongst Titans fans who think that this team would somehow be better off had he have just stayed the starter. No, no, no. That's not me. But by watching this franchise for the last 20 plus years, I know one thing is true. The Tennessee Titans are better with Ryan Daniel than they are without him. How can you say that? How can you say that? Bro, how can you say that? Because I've seen this franchise without him. Since he's taken over as starter, Ryan Tannehill has produced nothing less than the greatest career of a Titans quarterback in franchise history. And at worst, second best. I mean, who's better? What, Jake Locker? Matt Hasselbeck? Zach Mettenberger? Since taking over a starter in 2019, Ryan Tannehill is 30 and 13. Let me repeat that. 30 and 13. Since taking over a starter, he has a 102 quarterback rating. But of course, the naysayers will argue that <laughs> regular season means nothing. What can he do in the playoffs? What about his last two playoff games? Against the Bengals, he was awful. Dare I say, he sucked. But you know, on that same day, later that night, Aaron Rodgers sucked too. Patrick Mahomes in the second half against these same Bengals threw two interceptions and couldn't score a touchdown. Sometimes good quarterbacks have bad days at the office. But of course, the naysayers will say he was bad in the playoffs last year too, which First off, let's pump the brakes a bit. No one was saying that prior to the Bengals loss. In fact, prior to the Bengals game, everyone assumed that the Titans could not only go to the Super Bowl, but win a Super Bowl with Ryan Tannehill as their quarterback. Then he goes out and craps the bed, literal crap in the bed. It like a turd, just a massive turd right next to the pillowcase. And now everyone's ready to show him the door like a bouncer at Tootsie's. To me, it feels a little bit like revisionist history. But even if you want to put last year's playoff loss squarely on 17, which I think is a little unfair, you could argue that he wasn't even that bad. 18 of 26 for 165 yards and a touchdown. And his only interception came on the final drive in which Khalif Raymond slipped. Now, why was Khalif Raymond even in the game at such a pivotal point? Because Corey Davis was hurt. But sure, if you want to put that entire game on Tannehill, fine. There's probably nothing I can do to change your mind about that. But I will repeat that no one was squarely pinning that loss on Ryan Tannehill prior to the Bengals loss. Now again, was he good against the Bengals? <laughs> Not at all. In fact, he was awful. It was bad. But again, that same Bengals defense that picked off Tannehill three times went on to pick off Patrick Mahomes twice. So let's maybe try and keep some perspective here. And look, if we're going to get on people for not showing up in the playoffs, I really don't want to do this. In fact, I, I hate to do this. Followers or cork bats know firsthand how much I hate to do this. But where's Derrick Henry been in the playoffs? And not just the last two playoff games like Tannehill. You could even go back to the last three for King Henry. In his last three playoff games, Derrick Henry has 57 carries for 171 yards. That equates to three yards per carry and 57 yards per game. Again, you don't know how much this pains me to bring up. And I don't want that to be your main takeaway from this video. All I'm saying is there seems to be some sort of double standard. Why isn't anyone asking for Derrick Henry to be shown the door? What, because of his regular seasons? That's weird. I could have sworn that regular seasons didn't mean anything. Let's just keep things in perspective here, okay? This team is good enough to compete with anyone in the NFL. How do I know? Because they've literally competed with anyone in the NFL. Of the eight teams in this year's divisional playoffs, the Titans were 4-0 against them this season with Ryan Daniel as their quarterback. Huh, that's, that's funny. So what, people don't think Ryan Tannehill can be better than what we saw against the Bengals? What do you have, the memory of a goldfish? That guy from Memento and or Gronk? We've seen him be great. Hell, we've seen him be better than great. Prior to this season, Ryan Tannehill had more touchdowns than Patrick Mahomes, more touchdowns responsible for than Lamar Jackson, and a higher passer rating than Aaron Rodgers. You want me to keep going? Ryan Tannehill ranked second in passer rating, first in yards per pass attempt, and second in touchdown per pass attempt percentage among all NFL 
NFL quarterbacks. Those are elite numbers. Not like Joe Flacco elite either. Like I'm talking actual elite numbers. Now, am I saying Ryan Tannehill is an elite quarterback in the NFL? No, but he's certainly top 10, which is better than good, which is really all you need. This guy had more game winning drives in the fourth quarter and overtime than any quarterback in football. He had seven fourth quarter comebacks, which is tied for the most in football. And now he has one season that really wasn't that terrible, but just wasn't as elite as it had been. And you're ready to move on that quick? What are you, a Kardashian? I mean, keep in mind, this was a season where he was paired with a brand new offensive coordinator and he was quarterbacking a glorified scout team. This man literally held this team together while everyone around him was dropping like they were playing the squid game. The Titans literally set an NFL record for being the most injured team in NFL history by week 12. And yet Tannehill not only managed to keep the train on the tracks, but he earned the one seed. You want to compare him to the other great quarterbacks? Since becoming the Titans starter, he's 2-0 against Josh Allen. He's 2-1 against Patrick Mahomes. And he's 2-1 against Lamar Jackson. Jackson. What more do you want? But because he went out and crapped the bed, again, that, that turd, that, that was a massive turd right next to the pillowcase. Like it was just a little runny too, little runny turd. But because he went out and crapped the bed, a game that the Titans still almost won despite that, now you're ready to show him the door? Okay, fine. Fine. But I've always been a firm believer in the saying, don't be critical without providing a solution. So what's the solution here? If you want Tannehill gone, who do you want to replace him? What, you want them to go out and draft one in arguably the worst quarterback draft class since Jake Locker and Blaine Gabbert? Or maybe you want them to sign Russell Wilson. With what cap space? Or maybe you want them to trade for Aaron Rodgers in free agency. Like Aaron, there's no shot. To me, this entire situation points to one thing, and that's coaching. And I'm just going to say it. Todd Downing ain't it. If you go back and look at his one season as Raiders offensive coordinator, the franchise dropped in every major offensive statistic. They went from 6th to 17th overall, 7th to 23rd in points, and 6th to 25th in rushing yards. Oh, and Derek Carr just happened to put up his second worst season of his career. Now, let's look at this year. Oh, that's weird. The Titans dropped from 2nd to 17th in total yards and 4th to 15th in points per game. The Titans scored a touchdown less per game under Todd Downing's control. And Tannehill put up his worst season as a Titan. Hmm. That's funny how that works. Todd Downing is far from the heir of FedEx who preceded him. You know how I know? Because he doesn't deliver. I mean, when it comes to play callers, I'd rather have Todd from Wedding Crashers than Todd Downing. At least his play calls would be sexual and violent. I mean, I'd be okay with him drawing up plays with his canvas and easel on the sideline. You must be joking. At least he'd show more creativity than Downing. Oh, would that make you love me? I mean, the Bengals literally knew what was coming. The Bengals were probably like, it was a gift, Todd. <laughs> I'm taking it with me. Look, I'm not saying the Titans need to fire him. In fact, I hate it when people call for other people's jobs. Because frankly, I wouldn't want anyone calling for my job. Because there's many days where they could. And probably should. All I'm saying is take his play sheet away. Look, if you went all Cameron Fry from Ferris Bueller and took your dad's convertible out and brought it back with a bunch of scratches, maybe a dent in the bumper, and like Todd, you just couldn't finish drives, your dad wouldn't kick you out of the family. He would just take the keys away, which is what I think the Titans should do. But again, don't be critical without offering a solution. So ask for the keys from Todd. Bring in someone like Tim Kelly, who just got let go by the Texans. I mean, if he can turn Davis Mills into the best rookie quarterback in the NFL this season, just imagine what he could do with Tannehill. Three days later... All I'm saying is put Tannehill under someone who can pull the best out of him, like Arthur Smith did, and unlike Todd Downing, and unlike whatever the hell they had down in South Beach. Look, Titans fans, take solace in this fact. Last year, the Titans defense was one of the worst in football. They made some coaching changes, a few personnel tweaks, brought in guys like Bud Dupree and Danico Autry. They brought in someone from the outside like Jim Schwartz, and now this defense beasted this year. They straight up tickled every quarterback they faced. A team that had 19 total sacks a year ago had nine in a playoff game alone. So if Mike Rabel and John Robinson can go all Chip and Joanna on that defense in the span of one offseason, there's no doubt in my mind they can do the same with the offense this year. All I'm saying is it's not that great of a look for every Titans fan to grab their torches and their pitchforks and march straight up that Tannehill. All because of one and maybe two games. And again, if you think they need the best quarterback in football to make it to the Super Bowl, well, allow this list to prove you wrong. When you have the weapons and that defense that the Titans have, you don't need Michael Vick and Madden 04 quarterbacking your team. But even still, Tannehill's shown us he can be great in far more games than he's shown us he can be bad. So why do you think that great Tannehill can't show up again? They can legitimately win with this guy. We've seen it. <laughs> Hell, they almost did against the Bengals. Titans fans, all I'm saying is maybe it's time we enter the ninth stage of grief and just chill out. Time for everyone to Ryan Tana chill. <laughs> Is that, should I end on that one? Should, don't, I'm gonna be like Tannehill and end on my worst play. <laughs>
Look, is Tannehill perfect? No. Kind of like my beard. It's real patchy on the sides here. It's kind of gross, honestly. I should probably shave it. This was a quarantine thing. My wife hates it.